Whether you're moving to Spokane or you already live here, it's exciting to see all the fun changes happening to our city as we continue to grow. So today I'm here to show you a few more exciting changes that are happening in the Spokane area. So let's jump right into it. The first thing I wanna talk about is our soccer team. In previous videos, we've talked about them coming to Spokane and they have finally had their first game and it was an absolute hit. I was able to attend it and there was an incredible sold out crowd of over 5,500 people at the new Spokane One Arena. And the best part I think that happened was that it they had a win on their first game and they're actually doing pretty dang well they've won two games tied one and have lost zero so far in the season so i think that was like a I love that we were able to win the first game because it was a huge boost of morale for our community just to have this team that was actually doing good and had a great start to the season. So I think that was really cool. Um, the stadium is absolutely beautiful. If you're up in the big risers, you can you have this really awesome view to see just kind of the mountain, uh, mountain ranges that kind of split Spokane and the Spokane Valley. And it's gonna be really nice in the summer. I would, I mean, what I would do is I would actually recommend getting into the higher bleachers. I think the tickets are maybe slightly more expensive expensive but we had the cheap seats at like $24 and we were off to the side a bit in the bleachers but the seats were incredible like you could see the entire fields just fine so tickets were relatively affordable and the nice thing about being in those bigger bleachers is that on an afternoon game the sun is already kind of behind you and so uh, you're not going to be roasting out there in the summertime or anything as the weather gets warmer so it's kind of nice that they built it kind of uh, seating north and south because at least one side is going to be protected from the sun versus everybody getting roasted the entire time so it was just really cool experience to be a part of that very first game and the just the community support the morale in the stadium was incredible like everybody was so stoked that the game was happening and of course that we did well um, they got really cool effects they got smoke blowing every time they score a goal and all that kind of stuff and it'd be cool to kind of it was cool to kind of watch some of the traditions starting to be built up because it's a brand new team so we don't have like Every time we score a goal or anything, we don't have like our traditions yet of how we re how we react as a crowd to celebrate that. So it was kind of fun to watch those things uh, experiment a little bit at the game as well. So if you are visiting Spokane and the Velocity or the Zephyr, which are going to be starting uh, in a couple in August, I believe the women's team, if there are either of those teams are playing, I would definitely recommend grabbing some tickets and being a part of it. My friend decided to buy a beer and the beer was about the same price as a ticket for... <laughs> for us and so uh, if you just be thinking ahead if you are going to uh, buy any concessions they are pretty expensive there and I know this stadium has had a little bit of controversy there's people that uh, look at the number that it cost to build it was like a 35 to 40 million dollar project and they say like what could we have done with that money elsewhere in regards to like the homeless crisis and things like that and I don't know for sure but a lot of times this money's already been allocated somewhere on a budget line and from my own experience on being on boards and things like that it's hard to move that money around after it's already been agreed upon but I do think that this is a fantastic thing for our community it is technically owned by our public school district and so now this is the that super nice stadium that that all of our high school sports teams get to play in and it's really nice that it's central to everything like central to all the high schools in Spokane because it used to be Joe Albee which was on the very northwest side of Spokane. I have a lot of memories of Joe Albee growing up and going to football games and being in the marching band and all that kind of stuff but it was a super outdated field. It had been around for 70 years and so now I think there's a win-win here because they tore it down, they were able to put a new middle school out in the, on that site and now the playing the football soccer field is now central to downtown and there's another revenue stream for it with our new soccer team. So uh, I don't know, it just seems like in terms of the community and the uh, revenue that is going to bring in, the tourism money that is going to bring in is probably a great thing for our, our local economy, but we'll just have to see how that plays out over the long term. The next thing I want to touch on is our airport. I love reporting. I love being able to report on the airport and that the fact that things are changing because I feel like for decades, nothing changed in our airport. It was basically the same thing forever. So we've talked about the extension of Concourse C. They're well on their way with that. Every time I go, they're making quite a bit of progress on the expansion of Concourse C and really expanding the size of our airport and the amount of flights available. But the really exciting part is that the food and beverage lease has come up, has come due, and there's a new lease being signed by SSP America, which is a leading food and beverage operator for uh, travel locations worldwide. And they are taking a whole new spin on the food and beverage options available in the Spokane airport. And this thing is, this is crazy. Like this is actually, it's gonna be fun to go to the airport now. <laughs> so currently when you go to the airport, for me, I mean, it, 
I had never really eaten at the Spokane airport. It's not really been a place like other airports, Seattle. It's always kind of fun to actually stop and eat at the Seattle airport because there's actually pretty decent options. I mean, if I have an early flight, I'm going to stop in the main rotunda, uh, which is this uh, circular area here. Uh, and get Starbucks because that's what's there currently. But then there's just like, uh, I mean, there's like a wine and tap place. I think there's like a Burger King or something. Um, I, like I literally don't even know because it's just not, there's, it's just your standard airport stuff. It's nothing exciting, I feel like. Um, and there's been a couple other just kind of your random airport kiosks that every every place has but now they're going entirely local so starbucks is i know this photo is blurry this is the best one i could find but uh the starbucks is getting a, the boot and thomas hammer is taking over that spot uh thomas hammer will also have a second location inside of the sip and shop which is the wine uh place it looks like um then the restaurants off to the left of that are all going local so we're going to have method juice cafe juice place here in spokane local business shelby's which is actually a relatively new burger place in leta valley outside of eagle ridge they do like smash burgers and stuff so they're going to be in the airport and then yards brunch in which has been a pretty a staple of kendall yards for a long time uh they are going to have a spot there as well uh, Wonderless Delicato is taking over kind of one of those typical airport um, uh, spots where it's like candy and small snacks and magazines and stuff like that. Um, so they're an amazing like charcuterie place here in Spokane. Uh, let's see, Wiley's downtown. Michael Wiley owns a handful of restaurants here in Spokane, uh, but that's like, I mean, he's like upscale. So I'm very curious to see what he does in this kiosk here, but he's an incredible chef. Jack and Dan's is gonna have probably a little bar off over here, which is a local bar in the Gonzaga district that is not just for college students, but like actual, like lots of professionals meet for lunch at Jack and Dan's too. It's, a, it's an awesome crowd where it's super young people, but also like your professionals uh, tend to do a lot of business meetings at Jack and Dan's. So that's really cool. Starbucks is getting the boot to Concourse C. I'm sure they'll just have a small kiosk over here. Now, the cool thing about Concourse C expanding is that we're actually gonna get some good food options over there that for your Alaska flights. So Iron Goat Brewing is gonna have a spot in the middle of Concourse C here. Um, so I'm so that'll be obviously probably beer and then uh, likely some, some sort of pizza option. Melts Extreme Grilled Cheese. This is over in Coeur d'Alene, but this is worth the drive. Like if you are going to Coeur d'Alene, Melts Extreme Grilled Cheese is absolutely bonkers. They're so good. And then uh, Zona Blanca is going to call their new restaurant Zona Tacos. And so there'll be a little taco shop done by um, our one of our well-known chefs uh, and James Beard Award winner, Chef Chad White. And Yards is owned by um, a James Beard Award winner, uh, Chef Adam Hegstead, who owns quite a few restaurants in Spokane as well. So this is super exciting. Like you're gonna want to go to the airport a couple <laughs> hours early or hang out after your flight to grab some food or something. Cause I think this is gonna really elevate the Spokane airport to be a fun experience. And if this is the way that they're gonna decorate some of the uh, the restaurants and the eating area, uh, the, the, the whole Spokane airport experience is about to really become elevated. So I'm super excited about this change. All right. So this next one has a hilarious title from this news association because it makes it sound not correct, like terrible because this says Spokane city council approves ordinance allowing kids at street festivals serving alcohol. That is not true. That is, that is not the truth. What actually happened is they passed the Family Friendly Festivals Ordinance on Monday, which would allow families to stay together at street festivals that are serving alcohol. So we have things like the South Perry uh, Street Fair, which unfortunately actually isn't happening this year, but they would have beer gardens in the street because they shut down all of Perry and there would be a beer garden in the street. But you couldn't, if you wanted to grab a beer, like you couldn't bring your kid in there with you. So you would go get your, you have to like, leave your spouse with the kids and you go drink a beer or whatever, or you're just not drinking beer that day. So now this would allow you to bring your family into the beer garden. Obviously they're gonna check your ID. You might have to wear a wristband, I don't something like that, but you would be able to bring your family in with you grab a beer, go sit at the table and watch the bands because generally the beer garden has the best seats for the music anyway. So this also expanded the number of beer gardens that would be available at each festival. And so I just think it's gonna be a good way to actually for these festivals to make more money, for the bands to make more money because people aren't gonna be limited by their options. They can do whatever they want to do. And Spokane's a beer loving city. People will take their kids to the brewery all the time. So it'll be nice that they can take their kids into the beer garden at these certain festivals. 
So I'll be curious how they monitor this because something like Pig Out in the Park where there's seven stages, each one of those has their own beer garden. I guess like, an, I don't know, if a 16 year old walks up to the beer garden, then they wouldn't be let in unless they had an adult chauffeur into the beer garden, something like that. But anyway, there also, I think there'll be a little bit more heavy monitoring of who comes and goes out of the beer garden or, but also just making sure that everybody is ID'd and stamped as they always have been. So who knows, we'll see how this change looks uh, this summer as it goes into place. And lastly, because we love talking about real estate on this channel, and if you don't know me already, my name's Hayden Halstead, your local real estate resource here in Spokane, Washington, talking about all things buying, selling, investing here in the area and helping you, your friends and your family relocate to Spokane or decide if Spokane is right for you. So we can't not make one of these videos without talking about real estate in some way. And so I wish I had more development news for you as in new developments, new large commercial, um, new large residential developments being processed in Spokane, but it's really kind of the same old stuff. But we do have one exciting thing here is that the Painted Hills developer is getting things sorted out and with project approval. And so if you haven't heard about it, the Painted Hills golf course was located in the South Valley uh, right here. It's right off of Craft and Gather. That was basically Craft and Gather kind of was the clubhouse. And so the golf course took over the land, all the land in this area. And currently the developer that owns it um, is leasing out the driving range area um, right in here. Uh, so you can go use the driving range, but the rest of the golf course is shut. Painted Hills went bankrupt back in like 2003 and that's when the developer purchased it. And he has been f kind of battling the community for the last decade trying to get a development going here biggest issues that people are concerned about is that this is a flood zone um, that if they start building there's going to be huge flood uh, issues and so they have worked over the last decade to basically come up with different flood control systems creating uh, different piping and uh, like water channels under the roads to push stormwater away into a man-made pond that would have dry wells underneath it in case there was overflow. And so really going above and beyond uh, making an opportunity for any potential flooding to be managed and taken care of. Uh, the developer said that there would be an HOA that would manage this stuff, but the city of Spokane Valley was worried if the HOA dissolved who would be responsible for it. So they're having to create like a district uh, for flood control management out there. And so it's just been a whole thing because he has received 380 public comments over the last like five to seven years or so complaining, basically the entire community not wanting this to happen. He's done, he's going to have to make this community great in order for it to be possible. So there's going to be sidewalks all over surrounding this community for the kids to get to Horizon Middle School and really spending a ton of money on developing the land so that there are no issues with the surrounding area. So there's gonna be 307 lots total, but I believe it's uh, over 500 units because there's gonna be multifamily in the area. So it will, it will be a mixed use community, like what Greenstone often builds in Kendall Yards, what Mead Works is gonna be, the communities that Greenstone has built in the River District. So this is being developed by Dave Black. He's the owner of NAI Black, Black Realty. Um, and he's developed quite a bit in the Spokane area. And yeah, so this is gonna be 584 living units on 99 acres. They'll be looking at 250 single family homes, 50 cottage lots in the Northeast section that will be on a, as small as 1600 square feet. And they'll have over 225 multifamily units on a 10 acre portion of the lot. There will also be some commercial space um, and then 52 living units above that commercial space, like what you see in Kendall Yards. I understand the community aspect of it, where what it says in here that people just got used to, the neighbors got used to looking at a golf course. And now those neighbors are going to be upset, understandably, that it's going to be a community. But other than Craft and Gather, the Ponderosa Bar and Grill, there's not a lot of like things to do in the South Valley. There's not like you have to drive to go to any sort of restaurant or anything like that. So I would, I would be uh, an advocate for having more local businesses in this area, having a larger, and of course, any amount of new housing that we can provide to the Spokane area, I am a proponent of because 
we just need it. We're starving for single family homes that people can buy or town homes that people can buy affordably because there is no lack of apartment building. The latest data shows that we've actually overbuilt on apartments here in Spokane and there's actually too many. So we really need to focus on the single family builds. And there's a similar project going on in the Lata Valley outside of Eagle Ridge where there used to be a nine, uh, nine hole, three par golf course at the bottom of Eagle Ridge that recently sold. And so the homes along Turner Ave here uh, were very used to looking out to a bit, a nice, pretty golf course and not having houses behind them. But that got sold recently to a developer and Paris Homes is developing this area here. And there was all sorts of issues regarding traffic and things like that, which in Eagle Ridge, they're going to actually extend Eagle Ridge Boulevard and build a bridge here that connects to 195 because this right here is a traffic nightmare. There's a stop sign. You basically have to hang out in the median between the two uh, freeways and uh, just merge into traffic. It's it's a traffic nightmare. So basically they're going to relieve some of the traffic by having a bridge here. So the people coming uh, out of the community will go this way, but people coming into the community will come this way. And so hopefully that will help some of this um, scenario. So if you are looking for a new construction, single family home, and you want it to actually be a little bit higher end, these are two areas to keep an eye out for, Black Realty's development in the next five to seven years and uh, Paris's homes. I imagine these probably be available in the next, the first ones will probably be available in the next nine to 12 months based on where I've seen their development, the roads are in, but they have not started any uh, foundations yet. So, so I hope you found this video helpful. If you are moving to Spokane, you have any questions about the area, you can use the link down below in the description to schedule a meeting on my calendar at a time that's convenient for you, or don't hesitate to call, text, email me anytime if you need an answer sooner. I'm always happy to answer any questions and wanna help out as many people as I can, so please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.